Well, wasn't it Common who said that when he learned about Martin Luther King Jr.'s flaws, mm. he loved him more? Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. I kind of operate from that mindset. Like, there's inspirational and there's aspirational. Mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to aspire to be me because mm-hmm. I like I don't want people to try to be me or want to be me. Right. Like, I'm flawed as hell. Yeah. Or you but might what not, I a hundred percent. You might not like yourself. A hundred percent. I got a lot of pride. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like me. Like, but no, I do no, want to no. inspire people to take risks and like yeah. be themselves unapologetically yeah. and, and authentically because this like you don't want to be a boring, you know, person that just goes through life trying to do what you think people want you to do. Like mm. people want you to be yourself. Welcome to the arena where business meets sports, where strategies clash and victories are measured in dollars and goals. Get ready to dive into the dynamic world where the game isn't just on the court but in the boardroom too. Point forward ET, the NCAA generates nearly $1.3 billion in revenue last year. According to Associated Press, the NCAA has recently reported that they generated $1.3 billion in revenue for the 22-23 fiscal year, more than half of which was distributed back to the Division I members. Revenues rose up from about $1.14 billion from the previous year, $945 $945 million of the revenue came from media and marketing deals that are tied to championship events. NCAA's deal with CBS and Warner Brothers accounts for about $900 million annually. The TV deal is expected to rise to $1 billion annually in 25. NCAA expenses reached $1.17 billion, $669 million of it distributed to 363 NCAA D1 members. $192 million was invested to stage D1 championship events and other programs, and $100 million was given to D2 and D3 events. Is the NCAA too valuable to get rid of? Also, what would the NCAA look like if the NBA truly converts a farming system format like they do overseas, and should players be getting a piece of the pie? A lot of interesting questions. Yeah, for sure. What do you think? Do you think the NCAA is too valuable to get rid of? When you, when you, we just talked about last week that in season tournament that's coming up, where they're paying players two million and really get things jumping. You know what I'm saying? And when you think about the gambling and all that, is that something that can really occur? Because basically, when you're sitting here saying like, oh, they're getting paid from college, all they're doing is getting paid from the boosters. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, like, does it really help the game? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because right now the game's getting so oversaturated. I remember I read a tweet that somebody said, like, yo, AAU was really for, like, 5% of players and elite players to really work on their game. Yeah. Now this stuff is starting to become oversaturated. Yeah. That is starting to wear out. Yeah. It's just wasting a lot of people's time. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And when we're starting to talk about college and we're speaking on, like, what do we need to do more to really expand the game? It's like, yo. How do you not tell a you know a Darren Peterson, the number one player in Ohio, be like, yo, you need to come to this farming system and learn how to be a pro? You know what I mean? Or like build that. Like, what would be the future of sports for like the kids trying to make it to the next level since the game is so OD oversaturated and we're falling so far behind? Well, I do think it's hurting the game, the system that's in place. But there is something to uh, capitalism in amateur sports. There, there. They're making these huge um, investments <laughs> because it's bringing in so much money. And the TV deals themselves are just astronomical. And I do think it is something is detrimental to an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old to have access to all that money. But they are generating that revenue. Yeah. So they do deserve it. And so. But they're not getting that money. Oh, you say they do deserve it, but like. It, it's just it's just how do we divide it? How do we split it up? When do they get it? That whole system is just like something else that we just have yeah. to figure it out. I mean, you speak on to the boosters. I think it's taken away from them being kids. It's taken away from them having discipline. It's taken away from them to, to take, like, instruction, to go through hardships, to go through adversities. Yeah. You know, it's hard to coach them. They transfer every year. Then like, we have to be good. We got a kid right now. He made 13. He might ask. Like, and this is, like, 13 borderline honorable mention. He might ask for, a ha- like, a half a million dollars. So sometimes we look at this stuff and we're like, yo, this is wild. But I think when you handle an NIL deal, 
it might be the first real time where you can kind of I mean, the first real time where you kind of like weed things in as opposed to having these unbelievable numbers for kids playing in a different level where it's mm-hmm. they're going to school trying to become millionaires, which isn't bad, but it's it's all in the game, bro. Yeah, and you're and you're like you're selling you're selling yourself out, and most of them don't make it. Yeah, like ninety percent of them don't make it to the next level, and so. The NIL deals, like I keep saying, like there's a formula for it. Um, the farming system is probably better, but think of like in other sports outside of football and basketball. You know, the system works because, like, look what Clay, Caitlin Clark is doing yeah. for 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 women's college basketball. Yeah. Will we? Will, will, is that possible in a farming system for the W? And that's no knock. Yeah. But the familiarity of four years at a university, like that's what was working for men's basketball. Yeah, yeah, that, for sure. they, that's what's gone. Yeah, like, you don't even know who. Or you know that's what's yeah, gone. You really don't know who's in men's basketball. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta study the draft because I don't know who's who. Literally, and I'm about to go shake these kids' hands. I'm like, what school did you go to? What school did you go to? What's because none of them been in the same school for more than two years. Yeah. Or you go like talent sometimes. Like the number one pick that's supposed to be this year is a French kid. I forgot his name, Jeremy. But something. he dropped. I was just looking at the draft slots the other day. Yeah, yeah, but even my friend was like, man, I was like, bro, that's lit. Like, it's your, it's your young, and he's like, man, come on, dog. Like, I play with top five talent. Like, we just, I didn't make the league. This dude finna go number one. Like, this is what it takes to go number one in the oh, draft. Oh, Mock number one? Who? Huh? Our guy in OKC's little brother. Oh, yeah, he's nice. Jalen, uh, what's, his, what's his name? Jalen Williams. Williams. Yeah, Jalen Williams. His he's little nice. brother. It's 6'9", Cody Williams. Yeah, yeah Cody. From Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's doing his thing. I um, I wonder, like, when you break down some of these numbers and you're looking at the tournament and everything, it always makes me think because obviously we're, we're embarking on, a, you know, the opening of the tournament. But, like, J.J. Reddick, he tweeted a couple years ago. He said, all this money being made from this game and the players getting nothing. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I guess when you dive into that and you think about all the mass hysteria or, like, think about when the school goes to the Sweet 16, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, just some T-shirts alone. It's 100,000 T-shirts being sold, you know? Right. Yeah. So, So do we go, how do we fix it? Do we build a farming system? Because kids can go to college and get the money now. Overtime, they trying to see, is is that good for the game? All the guys get, like, those overtime, two guys that were supposed to be lottery in overtime, their stock dropped. Yeah. Like, which way is it going? It's like, this is the live PGA thing. Live golf PGA tour thing mm-hmm. where it's it benefits us all to have all the talent in one place. Yeah. Is that an antitrust violation with monopolies? Or is it just best for the ultimate goal, which is to get to the league? And so Or just like the petty goal to be like this is a game of basketball still in America. Like I'm not I still think we'll win the title like we'll win the Olympics and everything like that, but there's certain Moments like this that really shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you think about the momentum that's picking up over, like, what the Euros are doing in the pharmacy, you know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of got to stop, like, the skid down the hill, you know? And that's why I think that speaks to, like, who Wimby is. Yeah. Like, Wimby is who he is. His first thing when he said he came over here, they was like, how is it coming over here? He was like, it's a little different. Like, they do everything for me. <laughs> like, back home, I'm used to, like, I'll just go to the store, yeah. grab a sandwich, grab something to drink, walk back home, like, it's chill. He was like, here, people are rushing to do something for me. Yeah. Like, you hungry? You want something to eat? Yeah. You need a ride? You need to go here? What you want? He was like, I'm not used to everybody doing stuff for me. Yeah. But where he came from, you know, yeah. he learned how to, yeah. you know, you have independence, you know, uh, you know, have discipline. You yeah. got to wake up. You got to be on time. Yeah. You got to put the work in. You got to earn it. Where here, it's just like, our farming system is AAU, where it's just, you know what I'm saying, like, the AAU coach gonna start a team, yeah. found some talent, and then work his way up and, and, and pimp that all the way up. Yeah. You know, that's that's the system that we've turned into our game into. Point forward. Ladies and gentlemen, as we celebrate <laughs> Women's History Month, it's an honor to introduce a true trailblazer in the world of fitness and empowerment. Please give a warm welcome to the aspiring Jess Sims, whose dedication and resilience continue to shape the landscape of win- women's wellness and beyond. Point forward. Today, we are brought to you by 
uh, uh, the essence of a renaissance woman mm -hmm. um, from the mean streets of Massachusetts. Ooh. Uh, I want to welcome Jess Sims to the show. Thanks for having me, thank guys. Thank you for pulling up. Wow, thank you. Yes. That was a nice intro. Who are you? You just told the whole world. Kind of, but like, because you have this background mm -hmm. that there's no excuse for anyone to have to not get to where they want to be. Damn, I'm on fire today. <laughs> yeah, you're going in. <laughs> for sure. No, that's, that's, the, that's what I saw. Yeah. When I'm going through your background, I'm like, okay, so there's no excuses. All right, you don't have to be 6'7". You don't have to have a certain type of physique. You don't, you know, you don't have to have a reaction time that Isaiah Thomas talks about, the hundredth of a second. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have that in your skill set, but, you know, how you built your career, um... No one can have any excuses because it's like, yes, I'm giving you the blueprint. Just go get it. And so like, where did this come from? Like, how did you become who you are? Damn. Starting with an easy question. Wow. I love this for me. Um, I can tell she's never listened to our show. Where Where did I? Okay. I'm lover of the underdog. I think that's, that's where it starts. Um, my father is an underdog. Uh, my father just passed away in December. Sorry, but... Yeah. It, crazy connections. You're going to hear me talk about him so much because he's, you know, been such a huge part of my life in every way, shape or form, but followed in his footsteps. My dad is, uh, was a workhorse, you know, worked two jobs to support the family, came from basically nothing, the youngest of six, um, and played basketball. So that was always our thing. And I just saw the way that no matter what job he had, he was a sergeant of the police department as a black man. Yeah. And owned his own painting business, both commercial and residential, employed his whole family, you know, brought everyone up with him. And no matter what my dad was doing, he was always being super kind to people and he was always working his ass off. And I think that those kinds of things, seeing that from such a young age, and my mom is super loving of the yeah. two of them. I was raised by both of them. I have an older brother, a younger sister. Um, but by seeing my dad's work ethic and by seeing how he treated people, it was contagious. Um, and like, I feel like he and I have always had that bond and I'm just like the female younger version of him. So I think that that's where it stems from. And you credit him with your athletic background as yeah. well. Your dad was a uh, quite accomplished athlete himself, holds a lot of records at your high school, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. uh, let's go in and talk about, you know, Jess Sims early as, uh, the athlete. You yeah. were four time, you know, conference champion, two time all conference and you played, you led her as a captain three years in Trinity College, mm -hmm. correct? So... What was that like going back into those early days? And did you ever think you have like uh, OD hoop dreams going to the WNBA? So, guys, it's so crazy because now being on camera for all my jobs, I'm literally yeah. on camera for all my jobs. I laugh. My best friends laugh. My family laughs because that, that's never been me. I've yeah. never been the in front of the camera. I'm always behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so every sport I played, I got super serious about soccer, basketball, and lacrosse in high school. I almost played lacrosse at Trinity, too. Um I was never necessarily the best player, but I was always the person that was diving on the floor for the loose balls, wearing the knee pads, the mouth guard, taking the charges, going after the ball for steals. Like, I was always the person that wanted to do the dirty work and also the person, like, if our leading scorer had a rough night, I'm like, what time do you want to be at the gym tomorrow? I'll rebound for you. Yeah. So it was always about, like, putting the team before myself, and I think that that's something that has always carried through, not only just in all the sports endeavors that I've had, but also in all the careers that I've had, you know? Like, I'm 35, and I've had... I'm in, like, my third career, yeah. essentially, right now, which is kind of crazy. Well, let's dive into your first career. You talked about going into Trinity College, and right after that, you moved to Houston for yeah. Teaching for America, correct? Yeah. And uh, at one point, you were doing seventh grade remedial <laughs> math, and then you dove into third and sixth grade, correct? Third and fifth. Third and fifth grade. Yeah. So go into that. Did you think you were going to retire? When you think about teaching, <laughs> you'd be like, all right, I'm going to meet a teacher, and I'm going to retire at so here's 65 the thing. or whatever it is. I've always, I mean? I've always been, no, I'm, I'm, I've always been involved in lots of things. I've never just been in just one thing. I've always been involved in a lot. And so I'll never forget when I was at Trinity, I, I was a double major. I majored in psych and Hispanic studies. Yeah. And I was in the locker room. And you know how they put up like the bulletin board stuff, like the announcements or like, come check this out. I saw this flyer for Teach for America. And I was like, what's this? So I Googled it. And it was just like one day all children will have an equal opportunity and access to education regardless of where they're from. And I was like, oh, that's what I'm doing and like all my friends were crazy they're like Jess it's super competitive it was right after like no one was getting hired for anything and I was like no I'm yeah, doing this was crazy. Yeah, exactly right. yeah. exactly so even more people were you yeah. know applying for Teach for America and I was just like 
this is what I'm doing. And they're like, what's your backup plan? I didn't have one. Mm. So I applied for it. And then I'll never forget, I got the call that I got it in Houston. And, you know, I'm from Boston. So mm. when they asked you what your preferred locations were, I, I did like all the cities that were close by. So I was like, New York or the furthest one was California, but it was L.A. So I was like, all right, whatever. I know right. people out there. And so when they said Houston, I called my mom. My mom was like, well, at least you can tell people that you got it. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you're not going to Houston. You don't know anyone there. And I was like, oh, no, no, I'm going to Houston. And two weeks after graduation, flew down to Houston. Um, I taught fifth grade math, which as a 20, I just turned 22 in August of that year. Fresh out of college, you know, having two, three days playing sports. I didn't work out for like two months. I was a shell of myself. I didn't know who I was. I was waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning to be on the road at 5, to be there an hour before the students got there. Because as a teacher, you work nonstop. There's no work-life balance. It's like if you're not working, you're thinking about work, you're lesson planning, you're grading, you're calling parents. Like it's crazy. You don't have any off time. So you have to care. (laughs) That part. (laughs) That that part. No, 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 for sure. But that's the the thing, too. And, and Andre, when you just asked, like, at the beginning, like, who am I? Like, the first thing that comes to mind always is, like, I'm a servant leader. I always want to do things for impact. It's always something bigger than me. I never want to, I never played an individual sport. I would never want to play one-on-one anything. It's always me being part of a team. That's just my thing. And so I did fifth grade um, math. So I taught 75 kids. Then I was down in third grade and I just, I taught everything. I just had a self-contained classroom. Um, And I was actually hired to do special education, but there was a hiring freeze for that. So I did general ed and I absolutely loved it. Um, I did tutoring after school. I coached two co-ed basketball teams. Um, And then I was going to stay there a third year in Houston, but I had this once in a lifetime opportunity to open up a school in Harlem as a kindergarten teacher. Mm -hmm. So there are these two guys, uh, they opened up two different, um, elementary schools with just kindergarten, co-teacher model. I loved the the curriculum that they were using. I really was excited to do kindergarten because, I mean, four- and five-year-olds are freaking adorable. And so I did that, and it was such a cool thing because I got to experience all the -the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I got this look, yes, as a teacher, but also what happens, how else does a school, you know, function? And I forgot to also mention I got my master's degree when I was in Houston, and I also worked for Teach for America over the summer. So I I never had time off. Like, it was always me being busy because I I just, I love learning, and I love growing, and I love helping. And the master's was in teacher Teacher leadership. leadership, Yeah. So I did that um, one year in Harlem, but I stayed within the same network, but I went up to their middle school because they needed an operations director slash assistant principal. So I did that in year four, and I did that for two years. So four and five, I was there. And then I got another once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to open up a school where I was born, where my dad was born and raised in Lynn, Massachusetts. So to be an assistant principal in the exact same model of just a brand-new school. So again, just kindergarten, but instead of a teacher, I'm AP. So I went there. Guys, it was the best job ever. I finally had balance. I was leaving right with the kids. I was going to the gym. I was cooking. Like, it was crazy. I felt so good, but I was still unhappy. There was still something missing. And so I was dating a guy at the time who lived in New York, and he was in fitness. And I saw how fulfilled he was, um, how much it just, like, lit him up on a daily basis and how— people received him like after class they would just be like you literally saved my life Mm -hmm. I was in such a dark place and like to have you as Mm -hmm. this person to come to and I always know what I'm getting it's the consistency um like he literally was saving lives and doing it with a smile on his face and it's fun like you're moving your body right so I had to do this deep dive I was like all right I know that I'm meant to be a teacher. Like, that is my calling. That is what I'm here to do because I'm just so (laughs) passionate about it. But then, so my ex at the time, he was like, okay, but yeah, you are meant to be a teacher, but maybe you're just in the wrong setting. And so that was this, like, like this mind-blowing moment of, wow, I wouldn't lose all the skills and all the time and all the experience that I uh, acquired, you know, through education. I'd just be doing it in a setting that I loved, which is a gym. Mm -hmm. So I quit. So I was in Boston, left there in the end of December, quit Uh, the job halfway through, came back to New York, and my school in Harlem fired their principal. So the CEO reached out to me and asked me if I would come and take over because I obviously knew all the families and everything. So I came back in January of 2016 as principal. Yeah, no, so I came back as principal for those six months, but I started to do the work of being in fitness. So I got my personal trainer certification. I didn't have Instagram, so I I started an Instagram and posted, like, fitness stuff. That's crazy. Because that's that's your business card now. (laughs) I hear you. 100%. Like, people don't ask for, oh, do you have, like, it's, let me follow you on Instagram. Like, what value do you add to my life? So I started posting, you know, just, like, how-to stuff and, like, random things. Like, I'm not. I'm still, I still don't post a ton of stuff on Instagram and not TikTok either. But so I started to do that. Um, I was working out a lot. I did my research. I started to go to all the boutique studios in the city and I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay, this is why this one does really well. This is why this one doesn't do really well. This is what makes this instructor great. This is why this person has two people in their class. So I started to like be a student of the sport. And so I started (laughs) training at a boxing studio 
was on the schedule in September, and then I started training at a hit uh, studio and got on the schedule in December. And so I, I did that for a year. And Rebecca Kennedy, who's a Peloton instructor, she was the master instructor for Tread, and Peloton had just decided to build the Tread and all of that, right. so she was in charge of building out the team. Right. She would take my classes um, at the boxing studio. So she was like, hey, do you want to grab coffee after? And I was like, sure. So after class, we grabbed coffee, and she sat in, across from me and just rattled off all the amazing things that Peloton offered. And I just wrote them down. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing, amazing. But not right now. And people think that's the craziest thing yeah. for me because, guys, it's the biggest hustle to do fitness, especially in New York City, because you make great money. Don't get me wrong. But if you get sick, you don't get work and you mm. pay for your own uh, health insurance out of pocket, which is so damn expensive. And if you, God forbid, go on vacation, you are not making money and you're spending money. So like the roller coaster. So yeah, like contracted out of it. Out of you well in most boutique classes, you get paid per class. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, won't and some just, won't judges gang together because it's the same thing with dancers and everything else. Like in order to get that union, somebody's always going to do it for cheaper. I didn't say unionize or whatever it is. Somebody's always going to bot for lower. I'm. I just. Are you watch Griselda? No. Uh, on Netflix. Yeah. Come on, bro. So just putting them together. <laughs> the Hispanics do things way different than we do over here. It's unionizing, but I'm just putting well, I did, together. I did you, but if you cut their feet off, like, shit, I bet you could get it together. Probably. But, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true, true story. Yeah. True story. And so I'm just surprised that it's still like that, especially working for place like Peloton, but keep well, going. So Peloton is so different. That's the thing. So like literally when Rebecca was talking to me, I was like, wait a minute, you get a laptop, you get this, like you get that, like it's, it was crazy. You mm -hmm. get paid time off. I'm like, wait, 30 days of paid time off. Like that's what it was back oh. then. So it was just crazy. But yeah. I, I knew guys, I wasn't working out. I, I was teaching 30 classes a week. Oh, and wow. then I had three private clients that I did two sessions a week. I was barely working out myself. Yeah. Like that's the biggest myth is oh, people okay. are like, oh, you're a trainer. You work yeah, out all the time. Yeah. No, you work out other people all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So, but I knew that that was something that I wanted to do. So I worked towards it. I got another gig that did a little bit of on-camera stuff. And I was like, oh, this is actually not that bad. And then the last aha moment that I had before I reached back out to Peloton almost exactly a year later to the day uh, to audition in July of 2018. 2018, has it been? Yeah, 2018. Because this will, in September will be six years. I had this aha moment where I'm like, okay. When I wasn't sure if I was ready to leave the classroom to go into administration, I had a mentor that was like, listen, if your whole goal is impact, you have 27 kids that you're impacting, yes. But if you're an admin, you'll have 27 teachers who each have 27 kids. So your impact is just growing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same exact thing with Peloton. I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to leave, like, the classroom of, like, having whatever the, whatever the studio had, 10 to 24 to 40 people in a room. Mm -hmm. But that class lives and dies in that moment. With Peloton, we're broadcasting to the world. We're in Australia now. Yeah. Like, people mm -hmm. everywhere can take these classes. They can live forever. And... Betty Sue from Nebraska that doesn't have a gym within a two-hour driving radius can have me in her living room. Yeah. And so, again, mm -hmm. it's like the impact thing. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, I decided, I was like, okay, so a year later, I reached back out to Rebecca, I auditioned, and I've been there for six years in September. Well, you said something that I read earlier that I like where um, one thing that you do, it seems like you're well-researched. Yeah. But one of your main statements is if you can teach, you can teach anything, which is why you're able to transition. Mm -hmm. Go into that kind of mindset yeah. of what Dre said earlier. Like, there's no reasons why you can't make it. But uh, the mindset, what you say, I don't have to, I get to. It mm -hmm. seems like you push everything towards that to become, you know, somewhat successful or even to pass up on Peloton the first time around. Right. Like, what, what what's those type of plays in order to be sure and ensure uh, success? You're, you, there's no way to ensure that. Yeah. It's just like life is short and you don't know what's going to happen, so why not? And there are so many people that have told me like the people that you think have it all together, they're trying to figure it out too. So why would you hold yourself back from trying you know, to do something because you don't think that you're ready? Yeah. Being ready is a decision. If you wait to feel ready for something, you're going right. to be yeah, waiting for the rest of your life. And I also read to in uh, Sheryl Sandberg's uh, book, Lean In, she says, mm -hmm. it's not about, because you know, if you apply to a job, it's like, you need 10 years experience at this level to, no, it's, it's your ability to learn quickly and your ability to contribute quickly. If you can do those two things, you can do anything anywhere. And that's, that's kind of what I've taken from teaching into Peloton, into all the, bra the broadcasting I've been doing is like, I'm going to, I'm going to fail all the time, but I'm going to learn. And then I'm also going to impact, you know, whatever I do. So. That was my, that was the next question. Wow, it was crazy. You said that. Ooh. You know, how do you look at failure? I was uh, reading something today, and it was, hold on, let me get this. Because somebody mm. sent this to me today. Uh-oh. Uh, Leron Prophet, that's my press. guy. Prophet sent this to me, and uh, he's always sending me. If you want to be successful, I would encourage you to grow a tolerance for failure. 
and this is the uh, CEO of NVIDIA. And they've been around for a long time. People mm. don't realize how long yeah. NVIDIA has been around. Well, you also said, like, learn the mistakes of your heroes, right? And that's Always. the way you become. Right. Learn the confident. mistakes. Okay, we got so much to talk about. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. Learn the mistakes of your hero. I want to dive into that, like, okay. right now. Okay. Because I also hear the term, never meet your heroes. And, 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 it's, and it's held true. Every time I met, met my hero, I'm like, oh, this is why you're, you aren't supposed to meet your heroes. I know, and that phrase makes me sad. It uh, makes me sad. I guess, but the be- beauty of humans is complexity. We always sit here and be like, oh, you can't do this if people be perfect. And it's like, nah, probably, it's like what Mike Tyson said, that the, the brightest stars got the darkest shadows. But, okay, so Mike Tyson has a beautiful moment on Vultures 1, Kanye's album. Yeah. It's probably my favorite part of the album. Mm-hmm. But we're not allowed to like Kanye anymore. I know. But, but in terms of like, like, listen, man, it's inspiration. Like, I remove all that other stuff. Right. I, I'm removing it. And, and, and it's very, very inspiring. Yeah. In terms of like, I, I mean, I, I've, I've gotten to know the true essence of this person. Right. And, well, and wasn't it common who said that when he learned about Martin Luther King Jr.'s flaws, yeah. he loved him more? Yeah. And so yeah, I yeah. kind of operate from that mindset. Like there's inspirational and there's aspirational. Mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to aspire to be me because mm-hmm. I like I don't want people to try to be me or want to be me. Right. Like I'm flawed as hell. Yeah. Or you but what I 100 yeah. percent. You might not like yourself. 100 like, percent. No, I got a lot of pride. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like me. Like, but no, I do want to inspire people to take risks and like yeah. be themselves unapologetically mm-hmm. and authentically because this like you don't want to be a boring you know person that just goes through life trying to do what you think people want you to do. Like, people mm-hmm. want you to be yourself. Yeah. Nah. No, nah, I, nah, I did read something else, too. Uh-oh. Somebody got to me. It, was, it said this. You, people are starting to build versions of what other people want them to be. Right. And so we're all just putting on a mask. Or, like, this, this social media generation, that's where we're going the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So how do we... You know, how do we really inspire? Because we just want people to be the true essence of who they were put, meant to be. But we're all trying to be something else based on whatever society says what's to be. Right. Yeah, but it's like the common thing. You got to be light. Would you rather be light for who you are or hate it for who, you know, was it light for who you aren't or, right. or hate it for who, wait, hate, hate it for who, who you are and I love who you are not. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd and rather I be like, hated for who I am. Yeah, but there 100%. aren't many of us. We yeah, always say that. Yeah, but I mean, it just is what it, who, it, it's all on a level of success, I guess, and what you're willing to sacrifice to have that, you know, keep your identity. You right, know? right, right. Because right. each level you have to sell out when you get in different Well, I think, I think that people want instant gratification and they want stuff now. And it's, if you pretend that you're someone you're not, sometimes you get that that immediate, like, okay, wow, this is working, or I'm getting this accolade, or I'm getting this deal, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But people don't understand if you do the slow burn of just being yourself, you're not only going to have more success longer, but you're going to have deeper success because the people yeah. who fuck with you, like, really mm-hmm. yeah. like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus if you're trying to be someone, you get tired of that. Yeah. You can only keep up an act for so long, and that's exhausting. Like, yeah. who wants to live that way? Yeah, well, you are talking about Peloton, and you said, you felt like you had, like, a space to be yourself because the one thing about Peloton is everybody is unique. Yes. And there's not two or two. Nope. You have to appeal to a global market. So it has to be somebody that's uniquely themselves one-on-one every time. So how has that been able to help you, in, you know, in your job and be able to get more jobs for yourself to really show up each day? Because well, what you're spreading, your message is something from yeah. the roots that started years ago. Right. Well, I think in order to be a great Peloton instructor, you have to know yourself. You yeah. have to be very self-aware because it's so funny. People would be like, how did you know to say this in class? You write down your quotes. I don't write anything down on my notes. Mm-hmm. It's all just like push-ups, bur- like whatever yeah. the, mm-hmm. the program is. That I don't put any other notes in there. So anything that comes to mind is something that I need in the moment because yeah. I know if I need it in the moment, someone else is going to need it in the moment. And when I got hired, um, again, the fitness industry is super small. Um, Dennis Morton, who's a Peloton cycling and yoga instructor, well, I knew him. Dennis, what happened? Morton. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know him? Okay. Okay. He's yeah. one of the best guys. He's yeah. so deep. Like, yeah, sometimes we'll sit in the green room, like, have a conversation after class, and, like, we look at the clock. We've been sitting there on the couch for, like, three hours talking about life. He's the best. Um, but he, when I ran into him, I was like, do you like it here? Is this a great place to work? And he's like, Jess, I've never worked at a place that wants me to be more myself. Mm-hmm. He's like, how much more can I Dennis Morton? I'm already Dennis Mortoning yeah. so much, but, like, Peloton 
asks you to do that because then you're able to connect to people. There's 50 something instructors right now. They don't want, they cast us, you know, so if someone had the exact same background as me, they're not, even if they're a great instructor, they're not going to be hired because there's already someone that has this kind of story, you know? Yeah, nah. no, so that I, helps. I, you know, I think one thing that occurs where people relate to you so much is the meditation part. And you say you're able to dive deeper in and, uh, I forgot what book you said you read, but it was all about dealing with the gremlin. Yes. And then day in and day out, what you're showing up to be. Can you dive into that and how serious that is? Because when you talk to people about getting your mental right, when people ask me, I'm like, bro, this shit sound dumb, but like, just get your mind together and you can do anything. Yeah. And they're like, no, I, I want something else. There, there, has, there has to be a pill or something you take to 100%. be successful. Say, nah, bro, like, legends are made out of vulnerable men. Whatever you do, you're going to have to start the ugly trend. And in six months, maybe I'll see you and be beautiful. Yeah. But talk about that kind of path and what you had to go to to really be this amazing person and positive. Because even during a time where you didn't work out for, you know, a couple of years mm -hmm. on your hunt. It was an up and down thing, but I think that's relatable. Well, so when I didn't work out, um, my sister-in-law actually sent me the book called Wherever You Go, There You Are. And it just reminded me, because I can get so caught up, and a lot of us do, like, you know, you worry about the past and mm -hmm. you also worry about the future. That's where anxiety lives. How do you beat that gremlin is you stay where your feet are. You're super present, but that's so much easier said than done. So meditation for me is something I do daily, like several times. I do it in the morning. I always do it to fall asleep, and I'm mm -hmm. out. Like, I, I've never seen the end of a, of a sleep meditation I ever. I figured it out yet. That's the thing. People think that meditation is this, like, you do it right, you do it wrong. No, like, if you, if you mess up, it's like follow your breath. When you, yes. The whole thing is accepting failure. So when you sit there, it's like, all right, bro, I got a da 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 d. Yep. Like, I don't kick into <laughs> to my meditation until twelve minutes in, yes. and then I catch my breath. But like at one point, it's like when you wake up, you meditate and you catch my your worrisome breath. is in my way. No, and, yeah, and it's yeah. just it's and, kicking my ass. Right? And in yes. second, you be like, man, I'm just breathing and I'm rocking. There's nothing wrong. That's it. Yeah. Then you go out into the real world. I'm like, fuck, and I'm just breathing and I'm rocking and there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. A meditation could literally be closing your eyes in the middle of the day and taking three deep breaths. Mm -hmm. A meditation doesn't have a time. Like, you don't have to meditate for two hours in order to say that you meditated today, you know? No, no. I, it, I understood. I just have meditations work for me except one time trying to go to sleep. That's why. Really? Yeah, because, like, uh, whenever I do a meditation, like, I can feel it. It'll last for, like, two work days, three work days. So I'm oh, like, wow. oh, that All-Star Weekend was crazy. Mm -hmm. But I did a, um, I did my therapy Thursday morning, and I was like riled up because some people was doing some dumb stuff, and you know it fell on me, and so I did a breathing exercise at the end of it, got me through all the All Star Weekend, and All Star wow. Weekend is crazy. I mean, mm. I'm on from 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. Mm. and and I knew it came from that, so I know it works. Right. But going to sleep, we'll get there though. That, yeah, that well, that's actually kind of cool, though, because, I mean, sometimes I wish that when I meditated, I was more, instead of, like, putting myself to sleep, I would rather be more focused and alert. Gotcha. So I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Copy. Do you have an easy time falling asleep? No, not in not, the last mm. year. Okay. Because I did, like, a sleep study. I did the sleep school. I did the whole thing. I tracked my sleep. I, you know, pajamas, uh, certain sleep temperature. Sleepy time tea? certain temperature, a shower, certain time eat before I go to bed. Like, there's a whole sleep study on me and then how my stats correlated, my performance was correlated to how many hours of sleep I got. So I'm a master of, like, knowing That's amazing. I got to sleep. Like, I'm on it. But just, I guess, now that I'm basketball is not the priority, it's like, I, right. I'm like, am I not going to sleep because I don't have to perform? But I do because my brain needs to work. Mm. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure that part out. Okay. You also don't nap. Do you? Uh, yeah, I don't nap. Yeah, I'm not so. a napper either. But we should nap. Naps are good. So there's either people that need a nap or they need eight hours of sleep. I need eight hours of sleep. Oh, really? For I sure. can't. Yeah, I can't meet. I don't. When people sleep eight hours, I think it's crazy. Right. I, I can only sleep I'm like, like five. Six hours yeah, maybe in I, yeah. fifteen minutes. I get like an eight hour sleep like once a, once a month maybe. I got eight hours. Saturday night. If I get eight in. hours, yeah, I think I, I don't know where I'm at. I'm like, what? I forgot something. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't survive. Really? I but mean, I don't nap. Yeah, no, that's real. That's real. I, I can see that. Well, you can't nap because not only do you lead people's <laughs> lives in athletics and everything like that, now you're doing, uh, you're gracing the sidelines for college game day. Yeah. Can you tell us how that came about and just... You know, you're originally supposed to be a superintendent or a teacher. I know, and right. now you're, I gotta hear this. Yeah, yeah, now you're on like... TV. I, I remember sitting courtside. I was at the Duke first. Was yeah. it Baylor that was game? My that was a rehearsal. I yeah, and I was sitting there. Started. I'm like, is that Jeff <laughs> Sims? And I was like, there's no way. And then I was like, looking. I'm like, oh, uh, Jeff, that's my Peloton teacher. That's, that's <laughs> my Peloton teacher. Like, hey. 
<laughs> nice to meet you. I'm like, what are you doing That's here? Cr- yeah. So how did um, that come about? And, and Oh, God. Shoot, like, does that fees up for, like, the hoop dreams you had? Like, what, what's Yeah, what's well, like? so let's see. Okay, so I started at Peloton in 2018, end of 2018. Um, and then I had all of 2019, but I was on the tread. We had like 40 people on the leaderboard, which you know for a Peloton, like that was that, that was a long time ago. We don't we have way more than 40 people, right. especially on the tread. Leaderboards we, are intimidating too. I cut them off. Oh, good for you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah get out of sight, out of mind. No, oh, I, the competitive I, side. No, no, like for those, like I want to be in the top 25. Oh yeah. Or whatever, like top. 50. I try to get top 10 percent of all. No, of no that's what I mean. Oh, I'm not this, doing this. This is when I was in. Sh- this is oh, when what, I was playing. Shit, now, I'm like, like now. Yeah, you don't care. No, now I still care. I just make sure I hold myself like to a like accountability like all right come on let's get this work okay yeah no um so (laughs) i had that year of just like a few people on the leaderboard but then the pandemic happened Mm -hmm. and it blew up we Mm -hmm. went from i I don't don't quote me on this but like two million members worldwide to seven eight Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. um and i talk about basketball all the time i talk about being a former athlete i talk about the mentality and that's the thing too is like looking back of course it's like one of those things where if i knew then what i knew now i'd be a very different basketball player i had no confidence in sports and that's Mm -hmm. why i relied so heavily on defense one of those you gotta have delusional confidence to play this and i didn't and i didn't like i wish i had delusion i had none i was way too focused like I, i was way too in my head about everything and so that's why like doing this whole thing of like being in front of the camera so do like do or die for me because it was so different from what I was doing and it's, it was freeing to be able to do it because I'm like wow I can fuck up and like I, I survived like I still have another right, day right. I can still do that like people are going to show up the next day still and so it was just like a really freeing experience and so I talked about all of that my love of sports and also I'm literally like the host of my own show yeah. so for instance like I teach a 60 minute boot camp there's a five minute intro a uh, five minute pre-show Uh, including the intro, a 60-minute class and two-minute stretch. I am talking to myself for 67 straight minutes while sprinting, while doing snatches, while doing giving shout outs while looking at 10 different cameras with lighting yeah. it's I don't know if I'm impressed or like horrified because of the skill set that I've acquired yeah, by doing this no I'd be impressed I'm like she bet not take a break yeah she and, bet, I don't. and she bet oh, no, and no, I, I don't like, time out I'm like you bet and you bet oh, not take this but she t- when you time take out. a break time I out. take a time break out. I'm Alex. like say less Alex Stop, <laughs> stop taking breaks, G. That's my guy. Stop it. Stop it. That's my guy. No, he he's a killer. I but know, I know. It'd be, it'd be like Toussaint. It'd be oh, like... Yeah, he has... Oh, yeah, he has <laughs> Come on, one. Well, I know. Like, like, it's, it's been three sit and down. a half minutes, dog. It's been three seconds. Yeah. Sit down. Sit it's down. It's been three, <laughs> three and a half. seconds. Yeah, bro, straight no, up. No, for tread, we don't have the luxury of being able to stop running uh, at all. Yeah. And then for strength, like if I stop, it's just to do a little, a couple shout outs, but I do very few on the floor. I usually do the shout outs from the, from the tread. He don't, he don't take many breaks, but it's at the hardest part. Of course, yeah. I'm like, no, fam, sit down, fam. Yeah, like, no, because they'll right. climb, yeah, the mountain climb. Like, oh, <laughs> no, 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 let me see what you're doing. Like, bro, you're looking dead at a camera, bro. Get back on your goddamn bike and pedal. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, but it's technically, in our defense, it's not our workout, it's y'all's workout. So, we're here to motivate you and so if he and people love when he like stops pedaling and, and dances and does, whole, does his whole thing so um, th- but that's really really funny you guys just made me lose my whole train of thought no no no, no. So how do you get the ESPN we still oh there. okay 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 we're still on that so yeah. but wait how did I oh so I'm doing my own show mm-hmm. so then the first gig that I got um, one of the women actually a few of them that work for the New York Liberty mm take my classes so they reached out to my agency and they were like would she want to do in arena hosting so I started in arena hosting I just finished my third year last year Um, so I did that at Barclays and that was amazing and that was my first time really doing anything like that and then my agent was like um, one of the uh, execs from ESPN is coming to the city it was like and this is crazy. I ran the Boston Marathon April April 17th or whatever of 2022 I ran it for a um, crazy story. Side story is uh, a woman from Boston takes my classes. She was uh, at the finish line in 2013 at the bombing and almost had oh, to lose, wow. uh, almost amputated both of her legs. Oh, wow. But she rehabbed. She's great. She's awesome. She takes my classes as part of her rehab. So she asked me, she said that um, she gets a bib every year for either to run herself or to have someone run in her honor. And she asked me to run in her honor. Oh, I had wow. never run a half marathon. Yeah, that's a that's like oh, asking somebody to move for well, you. Like, it's like, no, you want to go. Like, I can you help me be move? sensitive to it, but I don't. I don't understand. Or right, you want to go to church? <laughs> 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 Damn, but that's like right, she was just right. like let me throw it out there. She didn't think I was gonna say yes, but she asked me like almost four months to the day, and that's like how that's how much you time you need minimum. No, you can't. 
And my, my mind was like, oh, you're not doing this, Jess. Like, sit your ass down. But my heart was like, oh, yeah, you're running a marathon in four months. Like, let your mom know. <laughs> like, that was literally I what somebody, I said in my I head. I see somebody get off a plane and run a half marathon, like, on, like, a day notice. No, I, yeah. I, that, a half, a, half marathon's not bad. Yeah, but that's the only no, way no, I no, can no, do no. it, though. A full marathon no is different. No training half marathon yeah, different. Yeah, but that's the only way you can do it. I'm not rerunning 13 miles repeatedly. I'm doing it one good time, no, bro, and that's it. Bro, I can't. You can't just get up. You can't just go run 13 I miles. I think you guys should train for a half. I can do a half I can do it, too, but why? But... I mean, a half is better than running for three and a half hours with a full marathon. If you run 13, you might as well run 26. Man, you run 13, you might as well My wife, my wife, well ran, a, my wife ran a half marathon off a plane from China. I could not believe wow. it. And, like, not unexpected. Just like, I was like, Nike doing this event. You want to run a half marathon? She was like, all right. She ran track, though. Oh, okay. But, no, no yeah. training in years. Yeah. I was impressed. And then she was in uh, she was in the bed for three days. Couldn't move. Yeah, bro. That sounds well, about right. That, that that part, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, but that's why you train so that you don't you're not debilitated the days after. Well, so what are we doing it for? How 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 long did it take you? An hour, hour fifteen? For what? The half marathon. The ha- half marathon. No, I never ran a half marathon, guys. I literally went from running the most miles I ever ran in my whole life was eight miles before Michelle asked me to run this fucking half or uh, full marathon. Oh wow! I ran a full marathon. Oh, you ran a whole. Oh, you want a full? I ran a full for free. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a hell of a guess. No, it was the most moving experience of my whole life. And it was, like, how crazy is this? She met me at the finish line. That was the first time she had been at the finish line since the bomb almost Aww. took her life and her legs. So I was like, if she can get there, I can get there. That's real. And that was like, and on my hand, I wrote, I don't have to, I get to. Because I don't. I don't have to run the marathon. It's a privilege. My leg, I'm healthy. I'm young. I can do this. I trained for it. And it was the best day. So you should give a speech to all the NBA All-Stars. Yeah, sure. like, I don't have to play an all star game. That I get part, to play an oh all star game. I know, yeah, right? no, that's real. That's real. But that is real. There's loaded statements on that, but I, I fuck with that. That's crazy. Yeah. That's- so I say all this to say so I ran the, um, the marathon. It was a sun, uh, Monday. Mm-hmm. Sunday, whatever it was. Two days later, I came back to the city, and my my agent reached out to me and was like, there's the, an ESPN exec. You want to get coffee with him? I was like, sure. I was in still such a runner's high. Like, the runner's high is real after you run a marathon. I was like, I was untouchable. You couldn't tell me shit. I was like, I just ran a marathon, like 26.2 miles. Anyways, so I meet him, I meet up with him. He's like, do you want to get uh, breakfast instead? So I was like, sure. I felt, as you guys can see, I'm a very animated person. I felt very subdued in the conversation with him. I was just like, oh, like, my energy was fine, but... And I spoke very clearly, but I didn't feel like I was myself. Right. So I leave, and I texted my agent. I was like, oh, just finished. Like, I felt subdued, whatever. And he sent me a screenshot of what the guy said, and it was like, just met, <laughs> just met Jess, big personality. And so I was like, oh, well, shit. Like, if he thinks that was big, like, right. okay. So the way that we left it, though, it was not about a specific role. It was just, hey, like— if there's something that comes up that seems like a good fit for you, we'll reach out. It could happen in a month. It could happen in a year. It could happen never. And I'm like, great. I have a full-time job. Like, I'm not pressed, like, for anything. So I'm like, great. So I left. And then, um, like, a week and a half later, my agent reached out and was like, uh, I don't want to make you nervous, but, like, they want you to go to Bristol to meet. And I was like, oh, my God, the ESPN campus? I get to get a tour? Like, this is I'm so naive, guys. Yeah, I'm right, like, oh, right, I'm like, this right, is yeah. so fun. Yeah, yeah. So he's like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take and he, photos. Right? And he was like, um, yeah, no. He was like, uh, I don't want to make you nervous, but it's for a college game day. And, guys, I wasn't familiar with the show. I went to a small school in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not from the South. I, it, football was great, but it was never anything that – it wasn't, like, under the Texas lights, you know? Like, right. yeah, so, so I went there. I met with four of the guys from the team. Mm-hmm. Great conversations, had great conversations, different conversations with all four of them. And then I let I was walking out and um, the guy was on his phone. He was like, oh, wow, this is moving faster than I expected. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, we want you to meet with the next like the higher up person um, when she's in New York in two weeks. So I met with her and then I got offered the job. So I, I did football game day. Mm-hmm. It was two years. Um, and then at the end, this is this is it gives me chills every time I think about it. So that the second season just ended um, January. But on December 13th, which was right after Army Navy, so we had like two weeks off yeah. before the playoffs, um, my this woman who I apparently met like one time in passing, but I didn't know her. I never had her number, nothing. Meg, she reaches out and she's like, hey, do you have time to hop on the phone? I have an opportunity for you that I think you'd be interested in. So I was like, great. It was like at 845 um, on the 13th. And so I hop on the phone with her 45 minutes later, like around 930, and she tells me, we want you to be a sideline reporter for basketball. We know mm-hmm. how much you love basketball. It's your sport. Um, we love what you've been doing on game day. We want to see you not only 
more on ESPN, but we want to, we want to help grow you and, you know, give you different experiences. And so I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, oh my gosh, this and that hang up with her, call my agents, hang up with them. I'm about to call my dad. And at nine 52, my little cousin called me and my dad had just passed. So when I told my friend Tunde, who's another instructor, she lost both of her parents years ago. And so she, like, she was one of the first people I spoke to um, about it. She was like, oh, my God, your dad didn't even put his jacket down before he was like, I need y'all to make sure that my daughter's good. Before I get settled up here, like, I need you to make sure that, yeah, like, yeah. that was the first thing he did yeah. when he left. Collateral beauty. And, like, how crazy is that? Right. That's, that's a crazy way to put it. No, no, I've never no, heard no, that no, before. No, 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 that's beautiful. Like yeah, you can't make that up. That's like right. the timing yeah, of it, yeah, and yeah. and and again, it was like yes, the job is amazing. But the way that she spoke to me of like we want to take care of you. We we care about yeah. your future. We care about your growth. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you with one of the best teams, like so that you you know get great feedback, this and that. And I was just like, I'm being taken care of. Yeah. That's only my dad. And he, did that take you back to the book too? Like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Hundred yeah. percent. I listen. I have a life coach. I, I've been in therapy like on and off for years, but I I met a life coach in 2020, and she's been life changing. Like completely has evolved my way of thinking. And I used to be a control freak. I used to be like, when I was a teacher, I'm like, all right, I'm going to get my master's. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be superintendent. I'm going to go back to and get my PhD at Harvard. Super, um, like, like literally, like, <laughs> oh, I was going to do all live? these okay. things, like right. education, reform, policy, law, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then ever since I got into fitness, I've been on the no plan plan. Yeah. And look what's happened no to me. Plan, plan. That's what I like. You, you just have to do what feels yeah. good and, and be in that flow state and like not try to force things. Yeah. yeah. Flow, the flow. Yes. The flow. I know a lot about the flow. I was told to go find the flow a lot at my old job. But you can't. That's the thing, though. That's bad advice because you can't find your flow. You have to. You settle into it. I was told to go make sure they play like teammates. That's Got what it. find the flow means. Got it. Mm -hmm. Make sure they pass the ball to each other. Got you. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's so important. Like you, you whenever you, someone says like, "Oh, I, I need to try," I'm like, "Try not to try." <laughs> like oh yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, for sure. You know, just for sure, for sure. You put the work in, you don't have to try. Yeah, yes. Yeah, or sometimes go and just change the room. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, change yeah, the yeah. environment and, and switch up and just and keep being who mm -hmm. you are. But I, it, you know, I struggle with one thing you said because I don't see it. You said, "I fake it till I make it" because I know I'm qualified to be here. Mm -hmm. But it seems like you're always prepared. I am, but I'm so damn hard on myself. Like, you know that interview question yeah. back when you were, like, in high school, college, or whatever, and they're like, tell us about a time that you failed. And people will be like, I'm a perfectionist or whatever. I didn't have an answer to that question because I never put myself in situations to fail. I always played it safe. I, I want to ask one thing that was pretty lit because you keep, uh, if I'm right or not, but you keep getting it, you know, popping in different levels and doors keep opening. Yes. You signed a Jordan deal, right? I did. Damn, that's tight. Look, don't, did. don't you think that's lit? Do you ever get hated on by your peers? And they're like, oh, good job, Jess. 100%. Because I hate them because I tried. And they was like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit, I tried. I knew his son. He's like, I'm going to ask my dad what he said. <laughs> Always. These are, these are Jordan brand, too. That's hard. Like, Always. That's crazy. How did yeah. that come about? Were you searching for it? Were you just like, hey. Mm -hmm. or, or do you sit back and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yes, and after I met MJ, you met the, MJ. Guys, we hugged. That's crazy. Because he he knows who I am. Like that's the thing with Nike. I don't want to misspeak, but there's like there's thousands of athletes. Yeah, they, but with yeah. Jordan Brand, there's less than a hundred worldwide. Yeah. So everyone is like handpicked and signed off by MJ Jordan, himself. Yeah. And yeah. um and my girl that I work with at Jordan Brand is the, his daughter is Jasmine and she's oh, like the Jasmine. coolest best Jasmine. she's oh, yeah? the best at human. All -Star break. Yeah, she's on. Oh, she's she's the, the, she does a really good job yo, too. Yes. She is. Yeah, Jazz is unreal. Amazing. Yeah, she she's actually and her shoes that she created the one the Jordan Elevens mm -hmm. for Astro. She's actually knows what she's doing. She's not like right his daughter. She's got the sauce. 100%. She's actually got it. No, she's that's one thing it. I told her. Shout out to I mean we we at space tournament. The All Star break, yeah. and we spoke maybe for like five minutes, and I was like, "Listen, it is amazing who you are, considering who you are." Mm -hmm. yeah. She's like, "What you mean?" I'm like, "No, you're like a real human being, and you have like a centeredness to yourself, and you have an awareness, and you like see the world like in yep. the, from a real perspective, and like you're like you're very comfortable with who you are. You don't have to be something mm -hmm. that." Most people would say you do have to be. Well, like, she she got um, she told me a story about how before she even applied to UNC, she got an acceptance letter. Syracuse. And she was like, Oh, that's no. what oh, UNC, UNC, okay. Yeah, no, to UNC. Okay. She was like, I didn't even apply there. So she's like, I don't want handouts. I don't want, so she applied to Syracuse and went to Syracuse. That's wild. Mm. 
That's crazy. Yeah. And then she became your yes. rapper Jordan. Yeah, and, oh, and, so and, to answer your question. Yeah, yes. how did that come about? That's what, that's what I want to know. Like, right. You got popping enough to be on that platform. Well, I, was on a, I had another brand um, deal before that with another. Adida. Nope. Um, Puma. Nope. Hoka. No. Nike? No. There I fucking know. Come Under on. Armor? No. I don't remember who I would have thought. Don't New we? Balance. No. What in the hell? We named them all. No, you didn't. We named? Who? No. <laughs> <laughs> Converse? Not Converse. No. Reebok. Thank you. Ew. God, yeah. Yeah. People don't know Reebok was always in the athletics. Yes. Space. No, that's how you did. You yes. always that, that little triangle bullshit. They had that on your feet, sweetheart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they made a great training shoe. They nah, really I did. It. They really did. But no. Um, so, yeah. So, I was with them for a little bit. And then... <laughs> My agent um, was like, what would be your dream shoe? And I was like, Jordan. Not Nike specific, like Jordan brand. Okay, and that's where your black side came out. Yes, okay, exactly. I, I was that. like, Jordan brand, 100%. So, yeah, so then we started talking. And, and it's really cool because, like, they don't have anyone like me on their roster. Like, they yeah. have professional athletes. Um, but, again, it's about impact. It's about changing the game. And well, you they are were super athlete. open. Yeah, a different, different kind of yeah, but you work yeah. out more than us. Yes. Like, right. like athletes only work out like an hour and a half a you day. You know what? It's true, and we don't have an off-season. I got so. a funny story saying. for you. Let's hear it. In the Olympics, 2012, um, we were using uh, – we had to lift, so we had to go to, like, the training facility where all athletes lift, right? And we in there lifting, and I don't know what sport they did. These were big dudes. Like tall, they might have been rowers. They look, they look like the Winkle Ball, the Winkle Bye. Oh, from, right? okay, I like from that. The movie, Winkle right? Bye. That the Winkle Bye. Yeah, yeah, I, I just like learned that. that. I just learned that. that. Yeah. But that was a good point. I was, when, they, when they plural them, I was like, yeah. man, good, the Winkle Bye. Man, but keep going. So they came over to us and was like, oh, you guys definitely aren't cheating. Like, you, you definitely don't take steroids. Because of the weights we had, yeah. it was like, oh, them, them baby oh, ass yeah. weights. I'm like, no, we play basketball, fam. We definitely don't like lifting weights. You ain't lying, Jay. Like, yeah, in the off season when y'all post like the videos of you oh, working no, my, out, just don't. Yeah, like my belly and stuff. And no, like, just, the, just the weights that y'all use. Like, you can definitely use heavier. Why? Wow, yeah. but we don't need to be. Yeah, we don't need to be doing. <laughs> if you want me to be a tight end, I'll, go, I'll take Travis Kelsey job. But other than yeah, that, I'm finna use We'd be tight ends it's, if we lift the heavier. Why are you. You're, you're equating heavier weights with like bigger muscles. That doesn't always mean that. What does it mean? Just you get stronger. I am strong. I used to lift heavy weights. I had hundreds in each hand. <laughs> That's a, and I was like, I'll never do that again. I got too strong. I was like, nah, I'll go back to the 80s. Okay. Wiry. Okay. Wiry strong. Wiry strong. Wiry strong. Wiry strong. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm into that for you guys. Love that for you. But, right, so but you were a huge basketball fan. Yeah. And so um, before before you answer, what, answer how we can solve for the All-Star game, who were some of your favorite teams and players growing up? Oh, so I'm from Boston, but Lakers. This girl, I can't yeah, Kobe Bryant was the number one for me. That makes sense. Number one. Paul Pierce was really, yeah, well, really, Paul Pierce is really, and Antoine really, Walker Garnett, was unbelievable. Paul Pierce was really Ray good. Ray Allen, like 100%. No, no, Paul Pierce was the truth. Yeah, Paul Pierce was I the agree. truth. I agree. I 100% agree. So Celtics were my very close second. That's, I don't know how that got to that point, but I, I, I hear you. Like, like, Paul Pierce was one of those... The insane confidence. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and he is also, when you break it down, when I tell people you see a six foot one player in the NBA, you're watching one of the best players in the world because of skill set. Mm. He has no crazy, like, like a Fred Van Fleet. Yeah. They have no crazy, like, advantage. Right. When you look at Paul Pierce, he was just slow, fat, out of shape. He and had no stri- weight. And had straight game. He wasn't dunking on nobody, wasn't blowing past nobody, legit. Just he was stri- dunking a little bit earlier. A little bit, but strictly the truth, bro. Kobe and I was jump- jumping through the roof, bro. Paul was doing fingertip dunks, dog. Do you know how hard that is in the NBA? Point forward. You know, what do you look to bring? Because you said the role you're in with Peloton, everyone's different. Right. And so how are you creating your own lane as a, a, a sideline reporter or uh, analyst in college basketball? Or what are you looking for? I love when people love their own work and their lives. And I like helping people discover that, whether it's a, a side passion, whether it's your job, whether it's taking care of yourself. Like, I think that's where the educator part of me will mm-hmm. never leave because I always want to help people and teach them because I know so much. Like I've, with all the different jobs I've done and all the different experiences, the states I've lived in and like my my upbringing and all of that. So, yeah, I feel like it's just. Okay, what's the worst question you've asked so far? The worst question that, that I've been asked that you've had to ask that you've asked someone that you look back and was like, why did I ask that? Like you haven't had any Nick Saban I moments. Ha- I know, I know. Thank God. Um, no, I haven't had any. 
catastrophic moments yet. Knock on wood. Yeah, that's Jinx me. Don't, what the yeah, hell? That's why you don't jump out of your comfort zone. With Do you think? No, listen. Yeah, yeah, no. There, like, listen. There are some. When I was told who I love, because I've seen Coach Cal probably like three times now already, because mm-hmm. we've seen Kentucky on the road a bunch. But everyone, everyone, whether it's someone I just met or someone that I know, everyone's like, whenever you interview Cal, the question is. What's on your mind? Because no matter what, he's going to tell you what's right. on his mind. Like, right. I could say, what's going on in the offense in the first half? And he'll be like, well, the defense, blah, blah, blah. Like, he will, he'll just go off. So the question is always, what's going on in your mind? What did you think of the first half? Right. So you always have to keep it super broad. So that's, like, something that I had to learn. Would you ever go to pros, NBA? For sure. What are you asking Pop? Oh, God. Get ready. You can help me with that. Pop does not answer my – he does not respond to my happy birthday tweet on January 28th. Oh. Because it's my birthday. Y'all and have the I, same and birthday? And I stopped texting him. I text him for like four or five years in a row. Like, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy and birthday. And you don't talk in between? Nah. I so mean, you just have a, a text chain of just happy birthday year. That's sad. Right. Sounds like America. But he's not from here, though. He good people. Well, hopefully he'll watch this and he'll be like, all right, I'm going to respond next year. Yeah, he's drinking wine. He ain't watching Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, once I figure out this hip. I will take some of your classes. Strength training. I got you. Strength training. Yes. No, See you with a pair of dumbbells. I thought you you got strength training. Is there? I thought you said yoga. Or is that my man? No. I mean, she does yoga, too. No, I don't do any yoga. I do it on the side. Like, I don't teach, no, yoga. I don't teach yoga. I teach pretty much everything but yoga and meditation. I taught a yoga class. Really? Real true story. I love that for you. Yeah. I told you class one. Yeah, I don't want to hear this story, Jay. It's on film somewhere. <laughs> Somebody got it. I'm just serious. <laughs> we just want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, and as a gift to you, we will be sending you our Jordan Brain Gear request. Thank I'll- you. <laughs> That's my gift. Yay. <laughs> I love that. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank I appreciate you. it. Appreciate Thanks. you, Josh. Point forward. Thanks again for joining us for another week of Point Forward. We don't take your presence and support for granted. Make sure you follow us across all social platforms and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast at Point Forward.